Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about Valkyrie Off-Road's roof rack system for the Ford Bronco. Uh, the Valkyrie unit, like some of the aftermarket offerings for the Bronco right now, is a modular design. Uh, basically what this means is, wherever possible, they share components between the two-door and the four-door. Uh, likewise, similarities between the left side and right side components are shared. Uh, this design is smart because it simplifies manufacturing. Uh, there's less parts inventory and it keeps costs down, obviously. Um, the Ford Bronco's got uh, a somewhat of an odd roof rack mounting setup. Uh, the two front mounts are narrower than the rear mounts. So there's like a wedge shape front to rear with the roof rack setup. Um, I don't know if Ford's own roof rack is set up in a wedge shape like this. Uh, I know one of the modular roof rack systems on the market right now uh, keeps this wedge shape in their design. Uh, so basically what this means is all their crossbars are different lengths front to rear. Um, normally this wouldn't be an issue when they give you six, seven, eight crossbars. However, if you need to reposition two or three crossbars to accommodate whatever you're putting up on your roof, uh, you're going to run into issues. The Valkyrie design is different as the front fixture points are offset to line up with the rear mounting points. So basically what this means is there is no wedge shape to the design and all your crossbars are equal length. This gives you the freedom to reposition your crossbars to accommodate whatever you want to put on your roof. Uh, for instance, my Yakima Skinny Warrior basket has uh, fixed mounting points on the basket itself. So I have to reposition my crossbars to accommodate the basket for mounting it, uh, not the other way around. Um, other items like rooftop tents uh, give you a lot of freedom with the mounting points as far as crossbars are concerned. This will be basically an install and assembly type video. Um, I'll point out areas of concern I had with my setup. Um, at the end of the video, you'll want to stick around because we'll discuss some of the problems that Valkyrie had manufacturing and designing the roof rack and issues that some customers have had which led to the bombshell announcement of Valkyrie saying, basically, do not use the roof rack. So stick around. The kit obviously comes with the necessary hardware. Butt head cap screws come in three sizes, half inch, three quarter, and one inch lengths. I began assembly with these, pre-assembling both sides. Note the washer stack. One flat washer between the plates and the hardware, and a lock washer directly underneath the nut. Leave this assembly loose until final assembly on the truck. Both inner and outer clamp plates should be labeled as per which side they are to be mounted. With both rear clamp pieces pre-assembled, we're now going to join the main side rails using these joiner plates. Both left and right side pieces are identical. Pass through the bolt and washer, then add your washer stack and nut to the other side. These plates can be mounted to either the inside or outside of the rear clamp assembly. I chose the inside to give me a flatter outside surface for which to mount my awning. Starting with a single bolt, offer up the side rail to the joiner plate and finger tighten it in place. Follow this with the second bolt and nut.
Once assembled, lightly tighten the hardware until we're ready to mount the rail of the truck. This is what the finished assembly should look like. Moving to the front of the rail, we are now going to attach the front offset mount plate and side rail doubler to the main side rail. Since we're essentially joining three quarter inch plates together, we will be using one inch bolts here. Pass both bolts through the doubler and into the rail and then offer up the front mount plate. In an attempt to keep parts from falling apart, I add a washer stack and nut to the one bolt. Follow this with hand tightening the second bolt and nut together. Lightly snug the assembly together then align the doubler plate with the top bolt hole. You'll be using a 3 quarter inch bolt here. Don't forget the washer. We don't want to finish torque this hardware together until we have the front wind deflector in place. Speaking of the front wind deflector, we'll start that assembly now. As this is just a single plate assembly with economy T-nuts, we'll be using the half inch bolts. Start by engaging each T-nut by one or two threads, a total of 10 altogether. Take one of the crossbar members and slide the T-nuts into the channels, aligning each pair as you go. We will leave this hardware loose until final fitting. With the supplied closed cell foam tape, cut four equal length pieces to apply to the front offset mount plates. This is to alleviate any concerns with the offset plate coming into contact with the windshield brow.
Now for install, begin by removing the front brow accessory plate covers. Underneath the cover is the cover retention plate. Remove these by removing the 10 millimeter securing nuts. Nuts will be reused with the front mount plate. Carefully set one of your rail assemblies on the roof and position the rear clamp plates over the notches in the roof. Gently place the front mount plate over the two 6mm studs. Further snug up the hardware around the rear clamp plates to temporarily keep the rack in place. Tightening sequence for the entire assembly must begin at the front offset mount plates. Make sure both sides are fully fastened before continuing with the rest of the assembly. Align the front mount plates over the 3 quarter inch reinforced braised locating bosses in the windshield brow. Add a pair of large washers over each stud and equally tighten down the 10 millimeter nuts. Return to the rear of the rack, I added my first crossbar here as this crossbar is vital for keeping the two rails properly distanced between the rear clamp plates. Once that rail is in place, you can proceed with final tightening of the clamp plates. Complete one side then move to the opposite side. This time we can also final torque the joiner plate hardware on each side rail. Remember, proper fastener tightening involves turning the nut side of the assembly, not the bolt side. For the crossbar hardware, it is recommended to use Threadlock Compound, which is provided in the kit. One inch bolts and flat washers are used here and on all subsequent crossbars. The hardware for the wind deflector passes through the doubler plate and side rails. This is why we left the doubler plate hardware hand tight in the beginning. You'll notice I spend an inordinate amount of time on this one side trying to line up the bolts. 
The reason being, this particular crossbar was delivered with a busted tap in the end mounting hole, effectively rendering it useless. It's true what they say about outsourcing, you don't have the ability to control what's delivered to you. At this point I think my dog was sensing the stress levels. From here, we can finish mount the crossbars, one inch bolts and flat washers, and don't forget the thread lock. Depending on what you'll be mounting to your rack, you'll want to give some consideration to the crossbar placement at this time. Once all the crossbars are in place, be sure to go over all your hardware and make sure that they are properly tight. And then you are finished and your Valkyrie rack should look something like this. So as I promised earlier in the video, I was going to discuss some of the issues and problems we've had with the Valkyrie rack. Uh, the timeline, this is just crazy. So I had to write most of this down. Um, in the early spring, they had their pre-sale, uh, $100 discount. And shortly after that, they became a sponsor on the Bronco 6G forum, offering members there another 10% discount, I believe. Uh, I ordered the, the rack and they said it was going to be available end of April. Um, come end of May, uh, I finally got my rack delivered. Uh, UPS driver noted extensive damage to the package and question whether or not I should take it. Um, I decided to take it anyway. Uh, I opened the package and all the hardware was missing. Uh, all the hardware, most of the brackets. Um, so this was the first long weekend of Canada, the Victoria long weekend, uh, traditionally what we call May 2-4. Uh, so that holiday was shot. Um, I uh, got a hold of Corey, the CEO. Uh, we've been in constant contact and email. Uh, he quickly uh, assembled the parts that were missing and expedited them up to Canada. Uh, however, they got held up in customs because uh, the folks at Canada Customs didn't like zero value attached to the contents. So what was supposed to be an overnight package ended up being another three or four day delay. Um, shortly after, after those parts arrived, I was able to install the roof rack. Um, no issues really installing the, the, the rack itself. Uh, but shortly afterwards, uh, they made the announcement and I got an email saying, uh, do not use the rack. Uh, found out on the Bronco 6G forum that there was a customer who evidently overloaded the front of the rack and caused some kind of damage to the truck windshield brow. Um, for better or for worse, the company did the right thing by, by making this declaration not to use the rack. But at this point, they promised to go back to the drawing board and come up with a new design that was going to be stronger and not have issues with loading. Fast forward now to the end of July, uh, I took delivery of their prototype parts. Uh, there was issues installing those. Uh, the rear clamp brackets on both sides, uh, they sent me the four door parts, not the two door parts, so they don't work. Um, I managed to put the rest of the rack together uh, and use the version one rear clamps. Uh, doesn't seem to be an issue. Uh, small, small matter of lining up on the passenger side. There might be a, a fitment issue with the, the passenger side front bracket. Uh, other than that, the rack's installed. Uh, it definitely looks and feels a lot stronger than the original. Um, 
I was supposed to test it out this weekend, but uh, issues with fitment and getting it going, I decided to cancel my long weekend trip this weekend. So my next trip is uh, in the middle of the month and I'm hoping, I don't know if I'll have the new rear clamp parts by then, but I'm definitely going to load it up and, and head north and hopefully this thing holds together. So thanks for watching the video. Uh, look for me to post the next video shortly. The comparison of the 2.0 parts versus the original Valkyrie rack parts. And we'll see you then.